Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. It's time to let go of negative thinking, understand why you do what you do, and stop the self-sabotage with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel, your resident subconscious success mentor, helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. If you want to stop self-sabotaging your own success and let go of the stress, then you are in the right place, my friend. Make sure you download your free Stressed to Success guided meditation at bit.ly forward slash stress to success as my little gift to you just for being here. Please do subscribe, share and review. It really, really helps people that need to hear this message find us and I so appreciate it. In the show notes, you'll also find details of how you can work with me and where you can get your mitts on my meditations, products, printables, programs. You can find it through the link in my bio on Instagram, which is my favorite place to hang out. So please do come join me over there at I'm Fran Excel. Tag me in your takeaways, slide into my DMs. I'm here for it. So that's the formalities over my love. So let's jump to the content. So you think you're no good at meditation. You've given it a go after hearing all about the benefits, like reduced stress, uh, increased concentration, all of the good stuff, but just couldn't get into it or silence your mind. So you've decided that you're just not cut out for meditation? You're not alone. However, it's worth saying you've probably been spun somewhat of a yarn in terms of what meditation should look like. The point is not to simply silence your mind. That's nearly impossible as a human, especially at the start. So no wonder you struggled. The point is to focus your mind. Notice stray thoughts and send them on their way and come back to focus instead of going on the endless loops that we so often do. It's also to allow space for any insight to come through, if that's what you're looking for. You are creating new neural pathways for focus, attention, concentration. You're reducing stress, anxiety. You're also creating pathways that allow you to be more in touch with your own bodily sensations, your emotions, and for creating and allowing for some space in your life. Handy tools to have as a business owner or just as a human, to be honest. Our brains have been trained to be distracted. No wonder we have a hard time focusing on deep work. Our attention spans are the smallest they've ever been. And signs are that's not changing anytime soon. You also need to remember that meditation is a habit. And just like you wouldn't expect to lose two stone going to the gym once or twice, you can't expect to nail enlightenment or inner peace on your first go. It's all about practice. You might also have simply tried a form of meditation that just isn't the best for you. Hang on, wait, what? Not all meditation is good for you? Well, there is a lot of nuance in the answer to that question. But if you're practicing a form of meditation that is causing you to ruminate on your thoughts or exacerbate them and then causing you more anxiety when you're trying to reduce it, then that form of meditation is not bad. It's just not good for you. There are several reasons it could also feel difficult to meditate. One could be things like ADHD. Even though meditation is widely recommended to be super, super helpful for ADHD, it can feel more difficult to start with. Again, nuance. Not everyone is the same. And another reason can be when your nervous system doesn't register stillness and quietness as safety. Its baseline could be more chaotic. This is super, super common and something I help people with a lot in my one-to-one and in my SOS, Success Over Stress program. Our nervous system is wired in childhood and there are so many reasons it can register as not safe to someone's nervous system. There's nothing wrong with you. We all have to navigate our different wiring, yeah? There are so many different types and ways to meditate. I was talking to my dad when we went paddleboarding the other day and we figured out that fishing was his version of meditation. Yeah, you still got that point of focus and quietness and stillness, yeah? So let's have a look at some of the types of meditation that are out there and see if there's something you'd be keen to try. And I'm also gonna give you some of my favorite tangible tools to try as well. 
So first up, I'm giving you mindfulness meditation. This is one of my favorites and something that I'm I'm qualifying in to be able to teach. I'll do an episode on the neuroscience of mindfulness soon because it, it, there's a lot to it and it's been mainstreamed, in inverted commas, so much that it's easy to ignore. Like so many of the tools and modalities that really, really work on a scientific and neurological level. The other thing I love about mindfulness is you can do it in bursts of a few minutes throughout your day. It doesn't demand so much time. You don't feel the need to schedule it in in the same way. So you can start with simply waking up your senses in any given moment. What can you see? Spend a couple of seconds doing that. What can you hear? You know, spend a couple of minutes, say, a couple of seconds going, okay, what's the closest sound to me? What's the furthest away? What can you feel, smell, or taste? What sensations can you feel in your body using your interoception? What can you look at with more focus and detail than you ever have before? So that's why I love my mindfulness. Super easy. Guided meditation is a great place to start. And I still love it now. And I found right at the beginning of my journey that it it did help me with quietening thoughts. Guided meditation is where you are literally guided by someone else in, in a recording or in person. There may or may not be music, but it's about being guided through the practice by someone you can trust and can, can, you know, calm one of those when you start to think, am I doing it right? You can calm that. Yeah. Then the next one, silent meditation is a great way to tune back into your body noticing your sensations, noticing thoughts and emotions that might come up. We've been so disconnected from our bodies for so long that it takes time to recognize the sensations for what they are and be able to listen to the messages your body is always trying to communicate. If you've struggled with meditation before, this one is definitely more tricky and takes a little bit more practice. But the opportunity is there if you're looking to discover your kind of inner being on a more deep level. Visualization is a form of meditation where your focus is on an image in your mind's eye instead of your breath or something else. It can be a super, super powerful tool. My favorite one, if you've struggled with meditation before or if you resonated with the ADHD or with the, you know, growing up in a chaotic environment, maybe you had tons of siblings and it just didn't, didn't register it as a baseline in your nervous system to be safe in the stillness. Movement meditation. Ah, It's something I got into when I struggled myself with my meditation practice. There are loads of different ways to practice movement meditations. You can look into Tai Chi, Qigong, mindful walking, many forms of yoga as well, Kundalini yoga in particular. This is such a good thing to try if you fall into the camp of struggling to switch off or be still. It's a really, really good place to start. The next one is sound baths is a form of meditation, whether it's gongs, singing bowls, or something else, binaural beats. I love a sound bath, and I'm actually going to one this week for an hour and a half. Glorious, cannot wait. Another form of meditation is breath work. Now, this is an incredible healing form of meditation. There are some forms that are totally fine to do on your own, or there are some more basic breathwork patterns, but breathwork is best performed with a practitioner. You may also need to check with your doctor if it's suitable for you because sometimes for some people it's not. For example, if you have a pacemaker or heart problems. Um, So it's always worth checking before you go down that road. Um, Be specific about the type of breathwork that you want to try. You can also potentially panic in breathwork sessions, which is why it's really, really worth working with a practitioner who can teach you what to expect and what's safe um, and to, to help you actually through the practice. You can get a huge, tremendous amount from that. So if you get an opportunity to go to sessions where there's um, safety taken into consideration, 100% would recommend. Um, talking of breathwork, heart math is one of my favorites. Technically not a meditation, but very, very close and has, in my opinion, even more benefits like using the breath to balance your nervous system and increase your window of tolerance and your heart rate variability, which is super, super important in healing and nervous system work. I'm a licensed heart math practitioner. So if you would like to explore this one with me, then just drop me a message. You can either drop me a DM on Instagram at I'm Fran Excel or um, drop me an email on hello at franexcel.com. So the next one up, Sensate. Ah, now I'm onto the tools. 
Sensei is one of my favorite tools if you struggle with meditation because it uses sound vibrations and also works directly with your nervous system, with your vagus nerve. And if you haven't listened to the episode of me interviewing the inventor of the Sensei, Stefan Schmelek, I'll link it up in the show notes, but I highly, highly recommend that you do. It's an incredibly insightful um, conversation and yeah, I think it was brilliant. So I also have a discount code for you as a Sensei partner. So lots of my clients use Sensei now and absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, I really, really highly recommend that you go and check that out. Next up is Moonbird. This is a new company that I've been working with and I've been testing the Moonbird myself and this is the first time I'm talking about it and I really love what they're doing. It's essentially a tangible breath pacer. So it makes lots of breathing exercises that much easier, including heart math in my, in my opinion. I've set my breathe, breath pacer on there for the heart math flow. So if you're like me and you struggle to follow visual breath paces, I really think this is a game changer. I really think it's a game changer for kids and parents too. Um, it breathes in your hand like a baby bird and you simply breathe with it. When it inha inhales, you inhale. When it exhales, you exhale. It just feels a lot more fluid, natural and tangible. I absolutely love it. There are lots of other types of meditation. There's Zen, Vipanas, I can never say it, Vipassana. <laughs> <laughs> Vedic meditation and lots more. Another thing that I used in my journey, which is a little bit more on the expensive side, but I do think is is an incredible tool if you really do want to improve your practice, and that's what it is, a practice, is the um, Muse headband. I have a Muse S and it plays back your brain waves as sound. So it plays it as weather. Um, and it really is something that helps you. I love anything with biofeedback. That's why I love heart math and it, it's why I love the Muse as well. Um, you can check that out. I think it's choosemuse.com. But I'll link these up in the show notes as well. Um, so make sure you check some of these out because meditation is an incredible, incredible tool. So I really hope that I've given you food for thought about trying to give meditation another go if it hasn't been a great experience for you previously. If you're a seasoned meditator, I hope you will geek out on any of the tools or techniques that I've mentioned that you don't already use or haven't tried. And always remember what's behind the intention to do something. If you want more focus, attention, concentration, less stress, more emotional regulation. For my brain geeks, if you want a thicker prefrontal cortex or corpus callosum, leading to better communication between the left and right hemispheres of the brain, then I really hope that you enjoy some of my suggestions. As always, any questions or feedback, just head over to Instagram or drop me an email. So if you got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and start changing things for yourself, then join the Positive Pants Toolkit app and community so you can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be. And if you want my eyes and ears on your problems, then I work with people one on one and through my programs. You can find all the details to join the toolkit or book in a call in the show notes, the link in my bio and Instagram and on my website franexcel.com. So stop waiting for if and when and choose to change things now because you can. I'm here to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And as always, I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next week. Bye.